Hello and welcome to Lavet Bondage. Today we are going to discuss how to configure your LabView environment for productivity. So let's begin. If you look into the screen, we have got the front panel with the default uh, configuration of the functions palette. It is navigatable, but uh, the problem is. Uh, they are not actually readable because we cannot see the names of these functions. So what we can do it is we can actually go to the tools and visit the options function. Uh, this is going to reveal the options palette. Uh, you can see various different options here, uh, starting from the front panel, block diagram, as well as the connector panes. Uh, so. You can actually go and configure them. Uh, I'm just going to walk you through. We're not going to configure yet. I'm just going to walk you through and then show you before the configuration and after the configuration so you can have a better understanding on how to use these configuration tools. So here I'm going to close this palette. Now if you look into the functions palette, we cannot actually see the names of the functions. Similarly, if we add a numeric control into the front panel, a terminal has been created in the block diagram, but it actually has a label and it's actually larger in size. Now we are going to add a sub VI. You can use any sub VI. Uh, as you can see, the sub VI is missing the uh, VI name on the top also as a label. Now, if we add a for loop, uh, what if I want to label or document this code? So one of the way is I can just write a comment next to that. But uh, this is not very practical because uh, uh, both the code and then the label are separate. So uh, it doesn't actually make sense. So what we can do it is if you right click, you can display the sub VI diagram label. And now if I paste it, now the flexibility is each time I move it, uh, the documentation moves it. But the limitation of this is like every time I, I add any kind of structure, I need to display the sub diagram label and then type it again and again. So what we're going to do is we'll go back to the options palette and then configure the setting. So that like it will be far more easier for us to save time in the future. Now you're in the options palette. Uh, the first thing we're going to work on will be the block diagram. Uh, we're going to uncheck the first option. Uh, this is going to ensure that the control, as you can see on the left hand side, uh, will come in a small size next time whenever we add it. And then like uh, we are going to display the sub VI name as well as the sub diagram level, which is actually the left one, the <laughs> documentation we're referring to. Now we'll go to the controls and functions palette. Here if you see it is actually showing category standard only. Uh, we'll change that to items and text. So it will be more readable in nature. Now we're going to close the palette. Now if we add a control just like the last time, the terminal in the front panel block item as you can see uh, has come in a smaller size now. Uh, similarly, now we'll be adding a sub VI and the sub VI will display the label on the top. And you might also have already noticed that, as you can see, the functions in the function palette now has got the labels also. So it is actually more easy to navigate. Now we'll be adding a for loop, as you can see. It will automatically add the sub diagram level and we can write our documentation. Uh, this will be applicable to any kind of structure you add. For example, here we'll be adding the event structure and the level has been added automatically. I hope you like this video and we hope that it has been productive for you. Uh, if you don't like to wait for the next video, what you can do it is you can visit graphtex.com courses and take up the courses full-fledged courses we have got trainings available from beginners to the advanced level cld preparation cla preparation object-oriented programming in lab view and actor framework training also 
Till next time, stay safe. Thank you very much for watching.